Howdy there, guys. Um, if you guys are following me on Facebook, you will know that I recently made a couple posts regarding whether or not um, Social Security should match the minimum wage. Now, the federal minimum wage is seven twenty-five, dollars I believe, um, with Georgia being the lowest. And I don't know how they did this. I think Georgia's like, I don't know. We're, we're going to get into it. Massachusetts is going up to 15, California's 15, there's a couple of them, but we're going to get into it. And my question um, on social media was whether or not Social Security should match minimum wage. Uh, I did one search for Social Security, it had said that the max benefit was, I don't know, it was like $890. And then I really got into it, and I'm like, wow, there's quite a few different types of Social Security collect, and uh, and I'm wearing a sweatshirt, just so you know, because I haven't gotten heat in here yet. So hopefully you guys can support and like this video. So one day I might be able to get heat in my room and see. I added uh, some the let me see the insulation board. I think it's like R four R seven. This is how the room's coming, by the way. This is my dog. I made him a little bed, but uh. Got the floors put in. Got my little workout area. And uh, yeah, I'm sitting on a cooler. So um, we're gonna go over in this video the, uh, the minimum wage of each state, um, social security benefits, the maximum allotment, and the cheapest states to retire in. Now, why does this matter? This matters because if you are living in a, uh, say you, have, this is going to apply to anyone working minimum wage or kind of a dead end job, which is going to be at least 70% of you. Um, for my, for my software tech guys and my accountants and engineers and self-employed people, Unfortunately, this won't really, it'll kind of apply, but it won't really apply. Um, eh, whatever. You, sh you should still watch it because there's, there's some do's and some don'ts. Okay, I also just read um, this morning that FRED, which is a government agency, said that it's, I think that monthly... Now this is this is for the entire U.S., not just here in Massachusetts, where it's 32 degrees right now, which is why I'm in a hoodie in my house. Um, the the monthly expenditures for housing, transportation, food, and utilities uh, just reached fifty six hundred dollars a month. That's a lot of money. It doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it is a lot of money. It it really is because I think like the average person might make like a thousand bucks a week. You know, if you work, if you make, you know, think of 20 bucks an hour, right? Work 40 hours a week, that's 800 bucks minus taxes. You're, you're not even, you're almost halfway to what the, what the monthly expenses are. You're almost halfway there. It's like your take home is like three grand. Okay, and you need like 5,600 just to be in the average. So you're talking 40 bucks an hour, 40 bucks an hour um, at, let me see, 40 bucks an hour at 40 hours would be, quiet you, would be uh, 1,600 bucks a week minus taxes. You'll probably take home 1,200, 1,100. It's been a long time since I've worked for someone other than myself. Um, so say you take home 1200 that's, I don't know, 4800 bucks a month, you're still not there. So 50 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour is 2000 so $8,000 a month minus taxes. So you need 50, we're just gonna say 50 bucks an hour just to break even, right? Which is why you need two incomes because most people do not make 50 bucks an hour. Um, I do because I can charge whatever I want, which is glorious, really is. Um, 
or if you're an accountant, engineer, plumber, um, you'll, you'll be just fine. But the average person working at Target for 20 bucks an hour, yeah, unfortunately, um, you're going to be, you're going to be hurting unless you have two incomes. So let's get into it. Um, I can read through the list. I guess I probably should just read through the list real quick. Um, now there's, uh, it is an alphabetical order. The, and here, here's, here's why this matters. The, the cheapest cost of living, which I'll get into afterwards, the, the, the 10 cheapest cost of living states to live in, um, also correspond with the, um, uh, lowest, uh, I mean, the, like the minimum wage, right, in the state. Um, the federal government says that the, I, I think the, the federal minimum wage is like seven twenty five. Um, but the states have the ultimate decision. So we spoke. Alabama seven twenty five. Alaska ten thirty four. Arizona ten eighty. Arkansas eleven. California fifteen. Hey, quiet, quiet. Colorado twelve fifty six. Connecticut fourteen. Delaware ten fifty. Um, there is nothing in Delaware. In case any of you guys ever drive through there, like there's a small city, and then there's nothing. In case for some reason you guys decide to drive through there, I made that mistake once. Washington D.C. is fifteen twenty. Georgia five fifteen. Um, Hawaii ten ten, which is actually surprisingly low because they have the uh, they have the highest benefits for unemployment. Um, Idaho, 725. Illinois, 12. Indiana, 725. Iowa, 725. Kansas, 725. Kentucky, 725. Louisiana, 725. Maine is 1275, which is surprising because outside of like Portsmouth, there's nothing in Maine. Um, I don't know how they, I don't know how they support that. Maine's, Maine's ridiculously inexpensive to live, except for, except for heating, unless you're going to use like, uh, you know, wood. Um, Maryland, twelve fifty. Massachusetts, fourteen twenty five. Going to fifteen at the, at the end of the year. Michigan, nine eighty seven. Minnesota, ten thirty three. Mississippi, seven twenty five. Missouri, eleven fifteen. Montana, nine twenty. Nebraska, nine dollars. Nevada, nine fifty. New Hampshire, seven twenty five. Um, oddly enough, yes, New Hampshire, seven twenty five. But that didn't make it into the top ten cheapest states. I don't know why. Um, New Jersey, 13. New Mexico is 11.50, which is surprising because um, the land there is disgustingly cheap if you guys ever want to buy land. Um, New York, 13.20. North Carolina, 7.25. South North Dakota, 7.25. Um, North Carolina, North Dakota did not make it into the top, into the top uh, cheapest living states. Again, surprising. Lay down. Lay down, please. Lay down. Good boy. Lay down. There's no one outside. Ohio, 930. Oklahoma, 725. Oregon, 1350. Pennsylvania, 725. Rhode Island, 1225. South Carolina, 725. South Dakota, 995. I'm assuming because there's, there's oil rigs. Um, maybe that's why they don't have the state minimum because there is, there's a lot of oil that's being produced. A lot of people are making some good money in the Dakotas. Um, Tennessee, 725. Texas, 725. Utah, 725. Vermont, 1255. Um, Virginia, 11. Washington, 1449. And West Virginia is 875. Let me see, you got two more. Wisconsin, 725. And finally, Wyoming is 515. Um, and if you ever go to Wyoming, there's some beautiful mountains there. Uh, lots of cattle and lots of trailer parks. Um, there's nothing really much. I went to Wyoming once and we pulled over to the side of the road and there was a big lake. The lake was beautiful. The shores were all covered in like these giant boulders and rocks. And there was literally trailers all parked all along the lake and people just lived there. And I'm like, this is the strangest thing. I don't know why we went. I still don't know why we went to Wyoming, but I went with a bunch of friends. 
And I literally, because we didn't come prepared, and I had wicked bad gas from eating tacos, um, so I made, a, I made a bed out of rocks, and I just slept outside on the rocks. Now I will say, because it's a little windy, because the wind comes off the mountains, there's not, the, the bugs weren't bad when I went, which was in the middle of summer, but um, there was nothing there. Again, beautiful scenery though. Um, the people are the people are pretty nice. It's just uh, it's just not for me, I guess. But all right. So now we have we went through all of the states to what the minimum wages. Georgia and Wyoming are the cheapest, but like at least two thirds, the minimum wage is seven twenty five. Um, two thirds of the United States, and that's because if you live outside of like. Uh, Massachusetts, New York, California, Seattle, um, at Washington D.C. It's it's pretty uh, I would say inexpensive. It's just like a reasonable living. So we're gonna go into geo arbitraging real quick in a minute. But let's go over these. So this is what I was talking about for 2022 max social security. If you were turning these ages, right? Max Social Security at 62, so if you were turning 62 today, you could get a max Social Security of 2364. Now that used to be the max back in the day, but they keep raising the age because Social Security is running out. So if you start collecting at 62, your max would be 2364 this year. If you turn 65 this year and you want to collect Social Security, you get 3345, which somehow, instead of it being 100%, which you would think would be the max, it's like 112%. If you waited to collect until you're 70, um, you would be getting 4194, which is like 130% of the maximum allotment. Um, it's almost double. Like if you wait an extra eight years, Right, which corresponds with the rule of 72, um, with a little cushion, right? If you wait an extra eight years, you basically make double. Now, it depends on what your life is like. My neighbor, uh, unfortunately, carpenter his entire life, um, married, divorced, had, had a couple adult children, a brother, um, rented a small house right behind me, um, you know, avid hunter, fisherman, outdoorsy guy. He passed away at 62, um, so rest in peace, Bill. Um, overall, pretty good guy, um, but he developed cancer. You know, working in the trades. It's not a, it's, uh, if, if you are working in the trades, and you guys know this, it's not a forgiving industry, uh, especially being a carpenter, which is, pro I think, the lowest paid trade you can get into. And it's the most knowledgeable. And I don't care what you electricians or plumbers said. If we didn't build houses, you guys couldn't run 10-2. And you guys couldn't run your schedule 40. And uh, like, you guys wouldn't have houses. All right. So like a, a carpenter literally needs to know every angle, advanced. It's like having an advanced degree in, in life. And it's the least paid. Um, let me see. So then, so that's, so... We went into Social Security. That's regular retirement age Social Security. Okay. Then we have SSI for individuals. The maximum allotment for 2022 is 841. And if you're married, you get 1261. Now that's the max. Um, then we have SSDI. Um, so... Uh, let me think if I remember this correctly. SSI comes from the general taxation fund. Whereas SSDI, Social Security Disability Income, and Social Security both come from the Social Security taxes that's uh, levied on people when they get their paycheck, along with FICA, Medicaid, and stuff like that. Um, and if you guys want to know, uh, I believe Social Security is, I think it's $1.3 trillion. Per year and Medicaid is like 1.5 I might be getting these mixed up uh, is 1.5 trillion and for anyone says it like the you know our what we spend on military budgets is way higher it's not it's in like the, it's like 800 billion 
Um, so security and, and FICA combined is like four times the military budget. Um, let me see, so maximum SSDI, so security disability. This is if you, you yell at clouds, you're, you have a migraine, um, you have anxiety, which, un, which makes you unable to work, you are bipolar, schizophrenic, um, uh, I'm trying to think. Any, if you have a case of the testisotisms, as Mr. Aaron Cleary would say. Um, so the max, and you can collect this at any time. And I know this because my biological egg donor started collecting this at 17. I know a couple other women who have started collecting uh, for bipolar schizophrenia around 17, um, which basically paid for their housing. So there's two tiers. If, if you are allotted the maximum, which I know a woman who gets the maximum because she's bedridden, um, you get 3148 per month. And that's basically like you literally can't do anything. <coughs> you have no ability to work. Your life is basically, you're just kind of waiting to die. Um, it, but if you're still able to work, like you have, you know, like you're bipolar, or you have migraines, the maximum you can collect is 1358. Maybe you're just depressed. You can get, collect 1358 per month. Um, like I said, if you yell at clouds, you talk to trees. Um, you're fat and you're obese and you have knee problems. You're technically disabled. Like if you're obese, which is, I think it's 50, I think it's 70% of the US is overweight and 50% of those overweight people is uh, morally obese. Um, they could, you could, you could qualify for that. Like if you are completely couch ridden, you could get SSDI. Um, and a lot of the times you can collect SSI and SSDI at the same time because they come from two different funds. I learned that last night by a woman who's been collecting for quite a long time. All right, so let's go into cost of living. And this is where it gets kind of tricky, right? So in order to collect, you're supposed to get 40 quarters, okay, which is 10 years. It's like your best 40 quarters in your entire working life. That's how they determine social security. A quarter is, like if you think of a year, it's broken up into four quarters. You need 40 quarters, it's 10 years. And in case you guys didn't know what that means. Um, if, so if you make, I don't know, for the past 30 years, you're gonna retire and you make roughly 30 grand a year, you can expect social security to check about $1,400 a month. And you could essentially collect social security disability at the same time, saying that you're fully disabled and rack in like five grand. Um, just depends on, depends on how you do it. Um, I don't know all the details of it. That's what I'm being told. So in case anyone has further details, please let me know. Um, all right, so we've got to determine the cost of living, right? This, the CPI data. Let me see, this one came up by Forbes. It's housing, utilities, healthcare, transportation, and groceries. Comes to $5,111 or $61,334 per year. Now you're not making that that's on average across the entire United States, which obviously is skewed upward if you consider the entire East Coast and West Coast, it costs a fortune to live, right? But what about the middle of the country? It's dirt cheap. Relatively speaking, outside of like Denver and Salt Lake City. Um, I think even Boise, Idaho is still inexpensive. Again, I went there, there's nothing there. There's a little town and then there's nothing for hundreds of thousands of miles. and. I should say hundreds of thousands of acres. All right, so these are the 10 lowest cost of living states. Um, we're gonna do the, the, the cheapest living state up to the highest. Now, I want you guys to remember, these correspond directly with the, um, uh, the minimum wage, right? You're not gonna see Massachusetts on here. You're not gonna see California. You're not gonna see 
Um, I don't know, Florida, because Florida's ex exploding right now with people. And the, you're not going to see Seattle. You're not going to see, um, you know, D.C. You're not going to see New York. Um, I know everyone wants to be a suburbanite, but you're not, you're not moving to Manhattan or Boston um, on, on this income. So lower cost of living states, number one, Mississippi. Kansas is number two. Alabama is number three. Oklahoma is number four. Georgia is number five. Tennessee is number six. Missouri, number seven. Iowa, number eight. Uh, West Virginia, number nine. Indiana, 10. And that comes directly from Forbes. Now, uh, what I wanted to point out was, again, they missed um, like Maine. Maine, outside of like Portland and some of the islands, if you guys don't know, there's like, I don't know, probably a couple hundred islands off the coast of Maine. And it's like ridiculously expensive to live up there. I don't know why, other than the fact that you get oceanfront, but it's like, it's cold, gross. Um, uh, Vermont's got a lot of cities, but still it's expensive to live in all the cities, like Burlington. Tennessee strikes me as interesting. One, because they have, it's a cheap, it's one of the cheapest states to live. It's ranks right in the middle. Um, they have huge, um, like nickel mines. They have, they mine for a lot of stuff. Um, I believe the largest mine there is Cumberland. And that's where a lot of people derive their work from. Now they might get 15, 16, 18 bucks an hour to do, to do mining. And it's not like you're going down there with pickaxes, like you're going down there with like machines to do the work. And they're huge. Like you can drive full front, you know, front end loader tractors down there and stuff like that. So it's, it's not like a creepy mine you have to crawl on your hands and knees. It's nothing like that. <coughs> but there's no income tax. There's like the, the registration, the taxes, the property taxes. Everything is really, really inexpensive there. And you can actually live off the land. And it's got a moderate temperature, really. I think it might get up to like, you know, in the low 90s in the summertime. And it gets down to the 40s in the wintertime. It's pretty moderate. You know, if you think geographically where it is, it's right in line with North Carolina and South Carolina. It's like you can literally just draw a line right over. Um, let me see. But other states I want you guys to consider would be Arizona, Maine, Nevada, Southern Utah. Northern Utah is expensive. Um, the Dakotas, Dakotas are very inexpensive. Most parts of Alaska are really inexpensive to live. Um, and if you're, if you're really feeling, you know, adventurous, move to another country. Go to Bali. Bali is the cheapest place to live on the planet right now, which is in Indonesia. Uh, I think it's five sixty a month is what your, all your expenses are. And I'm actually in the middle of writing, a new, uh, writing another book um, and I'm going over all of these numbers and statistics and different housing stuff right now. I, hopefully it'll be done in the next you know, couple months. It's pretty in depth. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to go over. But why is this important? Okay, so because disability is federal, it's not state, right? So what you could theoretically do is you could say you worked, I don't know, say you start working at 20 or I don't know, 16, right? And by 26, you're like, oh, I just can't take life anymore because I'm depressed and I have anxiety and I'm fat and uh, I just can't stop eating or I have... I don't know, I yell at clouds. Say you were to do that and you lived in Massachusetts, right? And you're making, well, right now, I think Target's paying like 22 bucks an hour. Not a great wage, but you're still living your parents. And so you could essentially collect, and this is where the arbitraging comes in, which is why it's important. You can't really do this in like Georgia. You'd want to live in theoretically a blue state that has you can be on your parents' health insurance, or you can be on state health insurance, whatever, um, until you start until you start ready to go on disability, and then you're going to. Now, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm not advocating anyone should do this. I'm just telling you what your options are. Or maybe you're retired. You're getting ready to re retire, and you're planning your retirement. 
right? And you wanna use social security. You're better off living in a blue state, paying in the fees, paying in the dues, um, because your, your minimum wage is higher, right? Which means your, like your median wage and your higher earnings are gonna be in Boston, right? Um, now, obviously it stops at 100, it stops at 160,000. So like you're not gonna pay any more social security or FICA if you make 400,000 versus 160,000, the cutoff line's 160,000, okay? And that's because it's like, it's almost it's almost 16% of your income. So what you're better off doing is living in a blue state, working in a blue state, right? Which is why all the blue states are, which is why all the people from, you know, Snowbird, they all live in say New England, they make the max amount of money and then they have a second house in Florida. The reason they can do that is because social security basically pays out enough to live in a cheaper state, right? It's, it's essentially free money. It's not free money in the big sense of the world, but since they just print off money, you know, by the trillions, um, it's, I guess it just kind of keeps going up. But here's the thing, like you can't do this if you live in Wyoming. You can't go work, you know, at Denny's, collecting minimum wage, get your tips, pay the, uh, the uh, a, a tiny insurmountable amount of uh, social security and then think you're gonna retire in Wyoming. It, it doesn't work, the math doesn't work out. You're not gonna make enough money. Even at $841, like you're, bare, you're basically gonna be living with your parents or putting a bullet in your head if you're gonna live in Wyoming. You have, to, you have to earn more money at a younger age if you want a better retirement. That's just how it works. Unless, unless you're gonna do what the new generation is doing. Now, I remember growing up, like, you kind of cringed. Like, uh, you got unemployment. Like, I remember, because I live in New England and I used to work for Stanley Steamer, every winter, we couldn't, they couldn't support the workers. So every winter, um, for a couple of years that I worked there, they put us on unemployment. We worked two days a week, collect unemployment. And it was like, it felt dirty. You just, I don't know, you just feel dirty, like getting an unemployment check while you're, while you're working, knowing you can work, but it's like if you take on another job, you're getting fired from your job where you make decent money and it's just kind of like the New England way, like fishermen and stuff have to do this all the time. But back in the day, like, it was just dirty. Like getting a government subsidy was dirty. It's just dirty money. Like you don't want to be thought of. You don't want to be that kind of person. That's how, that's what I, that's the age I grew up in. Now today it's kind of acceptable because everyone does it. I actually saw a chick the other day um, at the grocery store and she used her SNAP benefits and a single mom and um, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, whatever, makes sense. Not, not everyone does that, but a, a large majority of them do. And then she goes out to her car, and for some reason it's like she was waiting kind of around. And then she followed me out to my car, she jumped in hers, and she was driving like a brand new Toyota Highlander. I'm like, that's way nicer than my, my 08 Chevy pickup truck. Hmm, I guess I'm doing something wrong. Look at him. You can't. I can't even mad at him. He's so. He's so cute. So, how does? How, let's tie this all together so we, you guys can get on with your life. Stop listening to me mumble. Live in a blue state, make the most amount of money, or work remotely for a company located in a blue state, make the most amount of money, and then you can go live wherever you want in a in a state that I listed below that I already listed, I mean, um, that has a lower, a, a lower minimum wage. And you're gonna have the best, uh, you know, maybe by moving to Kansas, um, you, your monthly expenses are 1,500, 2,000. You can buy a piece of land, throw a trailer on it, and then you run solar panels, you have, you know, a well, and you can grow your own food. Hey, look, my monthly expenses are 500 bucks a month. Fantastic. I know people that do this in Tennessee because um, you can grow year round, right? And you collect enough social security or social security disability, which again is like 3,300. All of a sudden you're sitting, you're sitting pretty. You have like an extra $2,000 a month coming in. Now that's if you collect the maximum, 
like I said, the other alternative, if you're not quite up to par, and I know some people that are doing this as well, you geo-arbitrage, right? Open up a PO box, have all your mail forwarded to a sibling, relative, friend, or, you know, you, like I said, you open a PO box, so you keep a, a, some sort of residency trail. Most attorneys will, you know, you could file, I don't know, you could probably file something with like a, with your, your attorney and just say like, hey, I live at this office. Just you have a paper trail. Um, and then you collect your, you collect your, a lot of military guys do this. You collect your, your money and then you go move overseas. You move to Bali, you move to Mexico, you move to Southeast Asia. And you're like, hey, it only cost me, you know, 600 bucks a month to live and I get everything. I have friends that live in Mexico currently and they spend around 1100 bucks a month on all the living expenses. Um, I have friends in the Philippines. They were like 800 bucks a month. It all depends on what you want to do with your life, but I'm trying to give you guys options because a lot of you are going to work till you die because you're so, so gratiated with debt and student loans, mortgages, car payments. Uh, I mean, the car payments are just ridiculous. Um, if you guys want more information, please let me know. I appreciate the feedback. If you want, if you are a young person watching this and you really want to like skip all of that, please just join the military. Seriously, join the military. The Coast Guard, I believe, is paying $50,000 as a sign-on bonus for cooks. You invest that $50,000 at like 18. By the time you retire, you're a multimillionaire, right? You get free housing, free health insurance, uh, free food. I mean, you get like literally everything and you get a very well-to-do pension. Okay. So if you don't want to do any of those things I mentioned, you don't want to pretend you have a taste of, uh, the, the, the Cleary Tist and Tisms, um, you should definitely join the military. I wouldn't recommend p picking up a trade. Um, because it's very, if you live in a, if you live in a blue state, the trades are going to pay slightly higher than a red state, but the taxes and like workers comp and liability insurance are subsequently higher as well. Now you should pick up a trade just so you know how to do things on your own. And that will obviously save you a lot of money. And obviously if you're disabled, partially disabled, um, and you can learn to work on things yourself, that's like the best of both worlds. But uh, yeah, that's the lowest cost of living states. Like I said, Mississippi, Kansas, Alabama, Oklahoma, Georgia, Tennessee, Missouri, Iowa, West Virginia, Indiana. And all of those, with the exception of Indiana, are relatively moderate climates. Uh, with the exception of Georgia and Alabama. Georgia and Alabama are gonna be like, they're gonna be hot. It's going to be hot and swampy um, just where they're located. And if you're in Alabama, at least you're right next to the Gulf of Mexico. Whereas if you're in Georgia, obviously you're near the, uh, the Atlantic coast. Both places get hit with hurricanes, but that's kind of why they're all swampy. There's a high, there's a high watermark. Um, yeah. Or the, the, like the, the mountains of West Virginia into the mountains of Tennessee. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, the mountains are like South Carolina, North Carolina. Again, pretty. The Smoky Mountains are still pretty inexpensive. It's when you go by the coast that things that things get uh, a little pricey. But I mean, I mean, take a if you guys can take a you know an accounting course online, or even go to a class, go spend you know a couple months learning accounting, and then you get a part time gig, and then. I don't know, you, you, you just kind of figure it out. Um, but if you, if you can work online, you know, you make videos for YouTube, you make content for Facebook, and you can live in the, in the Midwest, you can have a pretty decent life. Um, now, obviously, the, the places with the, uh, not all, but the places with the, uh, like Mississippi, has a has a it's like thirty percent poverty rate. They're they're corresponded, 
but not directly with higher crime rates, but not the highest in the country. The highest crime rates in the country are in blue states, um, are in like devastating cities like Detroit, you know, obviously. Um, oh, I guess Michigan's kind of a purple state now. Uh, all right, guys, I'm signing off. I need to get, uh, I need to get to work. I need to clean some gutters for a doctor. Makes a couple million dollars a year. I'm gonna clean his gutters at his farmhouse. So, see you later.